Anyway, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some cheese. Um, I recently, I've never done this before, and I recently got this kit um, as a birthday present. So this is an Italian cheese kit, and I've decided that I want to make mozzarella or bocconcini because I love that cheese. I'm going to make ricotta later. I know that's another point, but we're going to get this one first. Apparently, this makes six kilos of cheese, so I don't know if it's in total whether it's this recipe. I'm not sure. Oh no, this, oh, it says here it makes approximately 600 grams of mozzarella. I've got all the ingredients. This is everything I've got in the kit, except for like my, my own bowls and knives and stuff. But we have to use the unhomogenized milk with the cream on top. Now I bought some earlier, but I didn't buy enough. So I need four liters. This is four liters in total, but I'm gonna use up these two first and then I'll just measure out the rest of them. Shannon? What? This is case people look at it. Okay, so we're set. I found a YouTube video. I'll link it in the link below. Um, it is in the instructions, but I didn't read it. So I, I, I did read it, but I missed it. But I anyway, could. I found I found the video. So um, what I'm supposed to do first is put four liters of the milk in the pot, and this is before you turn it on. And this, the hundred pot nice milk. You'll notice. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this. Hang on, let me see if I can bring it to you. You can see there. It's actually got the cream on the top. I might just shake it before I put it in. I'll make sure we get everything in there. Shannon, can you check on tiles, please? Whoa! Just make sure he's not procrastinating because I've got other stuff I need to do. Are you procrastinating? Stop it! I love that cream on top. I love them like that. We can't use it. Shannon doesn't like it in his arm. We used to buy it all the time. The cheese and stuff. But Shannon doesn't like it. He says he can't use it properly in the in the milk frother for his coffees. So. I love that milk. Yeah, I know. But you can't. You said it doesn't work properly in your frothers. Right. Uh, well, yeah. I love the milk. Yeah, we love the milk. We just, we just don't buy it anymore. But there's actually like, there used to be like a farm place down the road. Where you can buy it direct from them. It was really nice. So we need to get sodium chloride and we need to add two mils of the... I can't open things properly because of my shoulder. Shannon, get this, get this dropper thing in there. This measuring dropper in the kit, so... Yeah, it's two, so it's two mils of that. Okay, so we need two teaspoons of citric acid in quarter of a cup of water. It's gonna be non-chlorinated, but we're on tank water anyway, so it'll be fine. Okay, so that's a thing. Just cut it open here. So, two teaspoons. Quarter cup of water. Tyler, can you just grab me a Ziploc bag out, please? Right. Yeah, just, just a small Ziploc bag with a couple like a sandwich bag. So we are stirring it there. That's all diluted in. With the tile. This away for another time. Put it in. Okay, so now while I'm stirring the milk, I have to heat it to 32 degrees. So you even get you even get a thermometer with the kit. do after that. So apparently I have to heat this now to 32 degrees while stirring all the time. Alright, we're at 32 degrees now. So apparently what I need to do is take, I'll put the rand in. 
So I've got the round in. We'll take the thermometer out. And we'll just stir in the rennet. We'll turn off the heat. Stir in the rennet. Right, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to put the lid on. I'll put the lid here somewhere. The clean dishes. Okay, so put the lid on. Now, apparently, this has to sit here for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll check and see if the curd is uh, at the right stage of us to move on to the next stage. So we'll come back in 20 minutes. Okay, so it's been 25 minutes and this hasn't set properly. So um, in the instructions here it says that if you're having trouble getting it to set, um, it's because there could be inconsistencies in the milk, like the different batches of milk. So um, what I can do apparently is I can use another one of these rennet tablets um, and, and to try and just let it sit for, for a bit longer. So I um, will do that. We'll get the cup again and we'll put a cup of water in there. No. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Keep encouraging him by telling me he's fine. So I'm just putting another lock thing of rennet in there. Doesn't really say how long it is, but we'll put it in and we'll just stir it through again. See if it sets again. Okay, so this is set as much as I think it's going to set. Oops, turn the timer I have to put it. What we have to do now? I can show you this. Hang on. Let me get the camera and see if I can show you. This is what it looks like. So right now I need to cut the curds into squares to separate it all. And now I need to stir it and reheat it back up to 40 degrees. Let's figure out how we have to store it. Mascarpone, I've never eaten tribe of mascarpone to eat, I'd love to try. Storing instructions, you can store your mozzarella in the fridge in a solution of two cups left over with, the, with an eighth tablespoon of citric acid, also fridge or refrigerant and airtight container. I think we'll just go for... We'd have citric acid. Airtight container. We do. We've got citric acid in the container, but I'm not going to steal it. You know what? I think I will. Tyler, what? can you get me a container? Hey, Mufasa! Max. Max, sorry. Cats, naughty, naughty cats. Secure the bench, naughty cats. Max is a naughty boy. He's a naughty boy. A naughty boy. Oh, wow! Wash my hands now. Oh, we need a container with a lid. Right, Tyler, here, here. So we'll put this in here and put some water in it. Oh, you make sure then, yeah? <laughs> so it's well. Put some more water and make sure of the science. You, you, it's, it's, it, you put citric acid in sherbet, really? Mm. Okay. That'll make it sweeter or sour or something like that. So we'll put this here what too. about cheese? That's oh. ready. Prove that sherbet. Apparently you can get other kits and this is a beginner's kit. So if we screw this up, we're in trouble. Right, we need this to boil to 70 degrees on tonight. It's on 30. We're at the end of this now, so we've got the water up to temperature. So we're just going to take this out. You know what, Tola? What? Let's bring this over here so we can do it over here. In what way? Can you just put the pot on that tea towel there, please? I don't know. Can you put the pot on that tea towel, please? It's not at 70 degrees. Yeah, it is. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now, we'll take this out. Tyler, I need you. Turn it off. Because we don't have any gloves, I'm just going to put plastic bags on my hand. Tyler, can you help tie this up, please? Just like... Yeah, just sort of try and try them up a bit. Right, so here we go. Snapples. We're going to put the cheese We're going to put the cheese in the thing we did too late. No, no, it's, it's stuck a bit to the cheese cloth. We probably should have the water ready first before we put the cheese in there. Anyway, so. So, let's let it melt for a second. So, it's melted. So, it's quite pliable. <laughs> I've got plastic hands. Plastic bag on my hands, that's funny. I can feel that it's melted. I'm just waiting for it to be cool enough for me to touch. All right, here we go. Right, Tyler, can you just take that pot and move it out of the way, please? Okay, so what I'm supposed to do now, because you basically melted it and you rinsed it off, I've got cat hair all over my shirt. Anyway, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to work it and stretch it. This is what she did on the video. I'm sorry that you can't see but because I've got plastic bag gloves on my hands instead of gloves. Shannon. Shannon. What? You should come and see this, eh? A little after. Yeah, you should come and see the process now though. Look. Stretch it. Stretch it some more. Now I've been told oh, on the YouTube video it says not to overwork it because it can become too tough, but if you need to put it back into melt, if you're having trouble doing it, you can, but we've got a really good consistency. You know, it's a tiny little bit lumpy in places, so I don't think it's 100% perfect, but it's currently the right consistency for, for mozzarella, and it's not like, there's nothing bad about it, really. there's a little spot there we'll take out. I don't know what it is, but anyway. Anyway, it, it seems to have come together nicely. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that on the camera. Maybe yeah, can't. Yeah, can see. Yeah, I'll bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah, maybe to zoom in a little bit more. I'm making a right mess there. We okay, stop, stop, stop. No, back out of the window. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that has come together nicely. So. Now that we have stretched all that, what we got to do now is put it into shape. So I want to make little bocconcini balls because I like the bocconcini. So you can either make like a big mozzarella ball, but or you can make little bocconcini balls, and that's what I'm going to do. So. You know what, I'm going to take this, so I'll take this plastic off, it's, it's not hot enough that I can't touch it now, here. Can you? I'm going to melt this once more because I, I think what happens is I should have shaped it just a lot quicker. So, what you do here apparently, is you put the balls, you tuck it inside under itself, I'm not doing a big ball so, like I said, I'm just doing a little block and chain balls. And then you squeeze it out between your thumb, between your fingers and your, sorry, your forefinger and your thumb, you squeeze it out. So. Is it working or? Yeah, there's our first mozzarella ball. It's a block and chain ball of some sort. It's not the best shape, but. Oh, it's here. Right. I'm not a cheese oh. expert just yet. They're in the ice bath. So they cool off nicely, they're set. Look, yeah, look, they're set. 
Oh. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put them in this bath of um, we call it the citric acid bath that we made to store them in, and we'll put them in the fridge and we'll show you once we get them in the citric acid bath. Right. Tyler, do you want? To... Here we go. In the storage container. Oh yeah, can you flip it down so people can see? Yeah, a storage container. So we've got our balls there. Sorry about the shakiness. I have to get the tripod away from my So we've got our balls yep. there. You can see a little bit battery. of battery. Yeah, about a bit of fluid there. Sorry, that's it. Okay. So that's it. That's my cheese making experience. And we'll do another video later. Not today, but another day. Like probably tomorrow of us eating it. This is so good. So for a first attempt, it wasn't that hard. Just want you, you need to get everything ready to go. So we've got our videos to watch everything first to see how to do, do that first. Then put it all together. We'll make ricotta next time, which I'll maybe do do that during the week. A little more extra oh, milk. Um. So that's it. Focus, focus, focus. Look at it auto-focusing. Focus. See? Yeah, it does it all myself. It's so clever. Yeah, I'm going to fake it to myself. <laughs> Shannon and I have finally got some alone time. Car wash. The car wash. Extreme trip to go to get some time to go to a car wash. No, we are going to a party for somebody that's leaving town. Shannon's having a McDonald's coffee. The car's still a bit filthy, but I bet you it's going to be filthy for a while. Over that one. So we're not convinced that this is going to clean the car properly because it was so dirty, but it's going to be better than what it was. Actually. Yeah, there's mud and everything on it from all around, and no one washing it. Hey everyone, so we're home and I'm tired, so I'm going to rest and cheese making now. Um, if there's something you want to see us give a go at. Put it down in the comments. Make sure you leave us a comment, like, and subscribe. And here is Shannon to say good night. Lock us out. <laughs>